G'day, my name's Mick Button. I'm the Lower Hunter Landholder Support Officer for Local Land Services. And today I have Eric Pasno here with me, the Dungog Shire Council's Noxious Weed Officer. And we're going to look at green sestrum. Sestrum was introduced to Australia as a, a garden ornamental and it, its origin is from South America. Mate, would you be able to shed some light on how to identify it, um, where you'd find it on your property and and why it's a problem in rural areas? Yeah, we're standing here at, on the Patterson River, on the banks of the Patterson River. Uh, green sestrum's a problem in riparian areas like where we're standing at the moment, um, especially to cattle. Um, it's a, a very lush green annual sort of shrub. Yeah, the, the leaves are lanceolate and um, at the moment it's flowering, flowering quite well. Uh, we've got some samples of the flower here, a, a small little tubular cluster of bell-shaped flowers um, and when they um, form into fruit they're a little peppercorn berry and every part of the plant from seedling stage right through to parent plant is toxic so cattle will generally only eat it in a dry time or when they're stressed or just come out off a float or somewhere um, and it's very quick to kill them. They only need to eat a very small amount of any part of the bush and death comes quite rapidly after that. Every year there's probably in the Hunter Valley Dungog area there's probably two or three hundred cattle killed by it and not all of them are documented yep. but um, yeah it's very very toxic especially in a drought time when cattle are sort of forced to go and eat some green material. What other identification features would you be able to use to um, identify this plant? Yeah well the stems very brittle so they break easy. When the um, bush is not in flower it's um, harder to identify but if you grab a leaf, crush it and have a, a smell, it's a very pugnant smell, um, you won't forget it, you'll remember it forever and a day. They can grow into a small shrub up to about three to four metres tall and I have seen the odd one that's been a, a five metre sort of like tree. You're saying that it grows along riverbanks so is flooding one of the main ways it's dispersed um, or is there other, other, um, other ways as well? No, flooding would be the main um, vector of um, seed. Uh, birds pick up the, little, the fruit um, and eat it and then drop it off underneath uh, a cattle camp or under a fence line where they sit and roost. We're under a, a, a native tree here, a white cedar, and this plant's growing. Um, it's pretty healthy, so I guess it's one of those shrubs that really competes and outcompetes um, native plants and other vegetation to, to get a good foothold? Yeah, it, it dominates an area because it shades out all the other little plants and other shrubs underneath it and it can sort of like form its own sort of like monocultural sort of little dense riparian area zones and once it gets up into in a big lots like this it's pretty hard to control physically because if you try to remove the plant physically and don't get all the root out it will reshoot from where the the root breaks off. So how would you go about um, controlling green sastrum on your property Eric? Um, there's a number of ways. Um, chemically you can do a foil or a spray um, with Grazon um, but being in a riparian area next to the river and creek I wouldn't really advise that. I'd go more for a cut stump treatment with glyphosate um, because that way you've got no contamination into your, your rivers or creeks uh, and a much safer um, application. By far the best application method would be cut stump. Also if you do the cut stump, stump method when you cut the branches um, you have to dispose of them, take them away and burn them or, or bury them because the cut branches are probably even more palatable to stock than the uncut plant. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like everyone's responsibility to, to make sure that you've got um, proper control because in flood times the seed will spread for kilometres drifting along in the, in the current. And although we have said that we see a lot of it growing on in the riparian zones, I have found some plants kilometres off the river or creeks up a hill where birds have carried the seed and it will grow in open areas, not necessarily always in riparian shaded areas. Yeah, you know, if you've got this growing on your riverbanks um, and your, your cattle get in or your neighbour's cattle get in and, and eat it and, and die, it's also another really good incentive 
to um, control it on your property. Yeah, I mean, you lose one dairy cow or one breeding cow, um, and for that price, you could do a lot of chemical control. So if you have a green sesame on your property, um, and you're looking um, to work out how to control it or develop a management plan, you can contact your local land services, or you can contact your local government, not just weeds officer, like my good mate here, Eric, and um, they're more than happy to give you advice on control um, and, and help you out um, where needed.